Well, we got ourselves two WJs over here. This one has got a nice new engine. Oh, baby. We'll introduce that baby later. But this one, this WJ is not mine. It suffers from a little thing called a seized engine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, we gotta fix that. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. It has been a while. Don't know what I've been doing. I've been doing Jeep stuff, uh, but it's hard to keep track now. I think where we last left off, I was bringing home a Niner. I got a Niner and some Niner parts. Now I'm dealing with some WJs. Why? Well, if you remember the Green Hornet, that 4.7 blew up, it wasn't sitting right with me. I felt like I needed to uh, regain a WJ that I had lost. Uh, long story short, I got that WJ. That WJ I'll talk about later. Um, but while I was fixing that one, uh, this one came around. This is not mine, it's a buddy's. He said, I need some help, I need an engine. I said, I got one for you and uh, his engine is seized. So what we're gonna do is we gotta remove this engine, but uh, I don't know how to move an engine that's been seized because I gotta get to the bolts that are on the torque converter and well, I might just have to take this baby apart. So we'll, we'll get into this, we'll dig in, maybe we'll unseize it, maybe we'll just uh, take apart the crank and get to it that way, but we're gonna have some fun today, oh yeah. If you are wondering, this is what's left of the Green Hornet. I put most of my parts on that other WJ. Uh, yeah, again, we'll talk about this later. All right, here is the project at hand. This is Steven's WJ. It's got a 4.0 straight six engine. I basically stripped everything off. It's really simple, just a few bolts, a couple 10 millimeters, a couple 13 millimeters, T25 Torx. <laughs> there you have it basically just comes right apart if you want to see some of that i got other wj videos that takes apart all this stuff maybe i'll show you how to put it back together easy stuff no worries uh this stuff is simple too we got uh we got the valve cover off and we got the thermostat off we also have the water pump off the alternator bracket has been removed and so has the alternator now, in my garage resides the new block. This block was functional. I refreshed it with all new parts. And this is what a working crank should do. With very minimal effort, <laughs> it should turn. Again, we only want to go clockwise, but yeah, this spins. It is a healthy motor. And one more time, we'll just pop this on here. Yeah! Oh, baby! <laughs> Definitely don't want to snap off that nut, so we're going to uh, not try so hard to move it. And in here, inside the intake manifold, we have some very frothy oil <laughs> in there. That's not good. Uh, underneath the valve cover, there was some frothy oil too, but uh, that since had dissipated. This engine hasn't ran in about three months. It's good and seized. So what I think I want to do now is take off the manifold, the intake and the exhaust, pull the head and look at all the pistons, see what's up down there. All right, so to get to the head, I'm gonna have to take off the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold. Uh, they share these bolts all around and they are 14 millimeter or 9 16 but you might want to employ both 9 16 and 14 millimeter as you can see mine are two different shapes one's a little longer and the head is a little smaller on the 14 millimeter that could actually save you some clearance when you're up in here also, I have varying sockets. My 14 millimeter socket is a little shorter and my 9 16 is a 12 point. So definitely bring all you got because it's really difficult to get up in there. Up in here, not so much, but on the bottom, it could be tight, especially when the engine is in the vehicle like this. All right, let me try this 9 16 right here. All right. So far, so good. Crack that loose. See, this one don't fit. I wonder if the 14 millimeter fits here. 
See, look at that. 14 millimeter fits and the 916 doesn't. How about that? Break them loose, break them loose. And the nice part about these is once you break them free, they usually come out nice and easy, hand tight. That's why it's always important to torque these things properly because they could rattle right out on you or they're just rust and solid. But here we go. This is what they look like. And make sure you keep these concave washers. They are very important on holding the pressure on both the intake and exhaust. So here's one. One. Five across the top. And I'm gonna have to do this probably off camera because the bottom ones, well, they are just a pain to get to and you won't be able to see it anyway. So I'm gonna reach in there with some extensions and some universals and go to town. Wish me luck. Alright, so analysis. <laughs> this bugger was broken already. And let's see. Hey, we got some froth in there. So this was not a healthy engine. That's why it seized. Typical dirt. But there's all this ooze inside. It wasn't slime. It was ooze. Oh yeah. It's no secret. There's ooze. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, gross. I'm gonna throw this in the scrap pile. And here's the intake ports of your head. They are square. The exhaust ports are little and round. Here is your dowels that hold on the intake manifold. And of course, the exhaust is held in place by these dowels. Uh, these are E12, I believe. And uh, they got nuts that go on. Usually you back off the nuts and it pulls out the E12 dowel. No biggie, that's the way it goes. I'll probably put in new fresh ones in a new engine. I'll show you that later. So there we have it. Uh, good way to access the O2 sensors. I think I'll recover these. And uh, yeah, there we go. Let's uh, move on to removing this. All right, I'm gonna save these O2 sensors before they get jacked up. I got a 7 8 wrenchy, little box wrench. Big box wrench. Oh, yeah. Hey, these are easy when you have enough room to work with. Because uh, <laughs> when you're up under these things, dang. It's pretty damn near impossible to get to. Uh, much easier with the 4.0. The 4.7 uh, V8 WJs. I am not messing with any longer. No way. So. One or two sensor there. Oh, come on, baby. <sighs> Spoke too soon. She's on there. Oh, come on. PB blast. I'll give that a minute to soak in. In the meantime, I already got my 9 16 12 point on here on my little dowel, my nut dowel. Let's see if the whole dowel comes out. The dowel is coming out because the nut is seized to it in typical 4.0 fashion. Look at that, and a buttload of rust. Here's a good look at the dowel off the Jeep. As you can see, it is a, it's an E8. I was wrong, it is not an E12. That goes on there. I can't line this up one-handed, what's wrong with me? Anyway, <laughs> here's the crusty one. I'll probably let this soak uh, for a couple days in penetrating oil. Here is a set I successfully extracted uh, in days of old. It's uh, just the 9 16 14 millimeter nut. Here is the dowel pin again, and of course, this just threads on here, like that. If you want to see it on the block, why not? 
here is a block. Conveniently, these get set in the ends. Come on, baby. You just set that in place. You torque it down with your E8. And then you slide your manifold on, and of course, your nut right over yonder. And that's it. That's how you set it in, uh, in the correct fashion. There we go. Now, well, I want to torch it, but I got an open fuel line here, so I'm just going to tape this closed. As a precaution, I don't want to blow myself up or this Jeep because uh, I like myself and I like this Jeep. So let's just cap this fuel. You know what? We'll double bag it. Don't be a fool. Wrap your tool. Don't be a fool. Wrap your tool. Keep it very safe and disease free. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Baby's rounded. Luckily, I have an extra with the matching connector pattern. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna work my 9 16ths back here one more time to get that last little dowel free. No room for, for play here. <laughs> I got the nut off. Whoa, let me get my E8. My E8 is a quarter inch. Hopefully if it came out as easy as the other thing, the quarter inch drive will be acceptable. However, if it's stuck in the head, I don't want to snap off the Torx portion. Oh, that's fairly easy. Oh, we got lucky, guys. We got lucky. <laughs> Sweet. Both banks of the manifold are free. Look at that. Nice and jiggly. Now we can remove our, let's see, valve cover gasket. Get this sucker out of here. And we got our 12.13 millimeter. Uh, one half works also. Uh, I'm going to use my breaker bar and we're going to crank loose all these head bolts. Uh, there is no sequence to removing them. There is an important sequence to installing them. Right now, uh, I'm just going to buzz through these to install them. You'd start in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. Go around in a whirlwind pattern. Um, I'm just going to start with the closest one. Uh, they are on tight. They should be torqued to, uh, actually, this one's torqued to 100 foot-pounds. The rest are 110. So we'll go ahead and give these a good pushing. Nice. Uh, again, this one is also the only one in the water jacket, and this one takes thread sealant when you install them. Just going to go ahead and get all these out. This one back here on the XJs, you uh, you really can't pull out. You're supposed to unscrew them as much as you can, and then tape them in place, and you pull out with the head. Look at that, WJs. <laughs> they have the clearance. Everything is undone. There's a couple wires on the other side. Grounds like that, I want to make sure they're done. This head's shot, I'm sure, so I'm just going to use this as leverage. Wiggle them off their dowels. Oh, baby. Oh, there's some push rods. Oh, 
man, it's heavy. Well, note to self. Uh, take the push rods out first. I always forget. But man, oh man, we got nastiness up in all of them. And there we go. Cylinder number five. You're looking yucky. Six. Oh, cylinder six is blown up. Wow, guys. Look at this. Cylinder six. Man, that's a game changer. There's nothing left of this piston. Holy smokes. I've never seen anything like that. That is bad. <laughs> there is the wrist pin. Uh, there should be a piston at the end. I see the end of the connecting rod. And... <laughs> A big hole right in the cylinder wall. You can see some of that coolant in there still. And the coolant mixed with the oil and then made that sludge. Wow. Wow. Catastrophic failure. Let's take a look at this head. So far, so good. Normal yucky head. <laughs> and oh man. Cylinder six. And look, there's no valve. The intake valve is gone, ripped off. Oh man, the head is shot too. Look at that chunk missing out of that head. Yeah, she's a goner. She's a paperweight. Wow, how about that? Crazy, crazy destruction. All right, so here we are. Still not turning, jammed up. We got one, two, three, four decent looking pistons. I don't see why there's any reason uh, that this can't be moved. Uh, we have no piston in there. I like to think that this uh, water rusted up this piston, number five. So I'm gonna see if we could get piston five clean and then maybe we could rotate this thing if not, uh, I'll have to get in there and clean up that mess. Um, but I'd rather free this up from the top so I won't have to go in the bottom. Otherwise, we're going to be dropping this oil pan. I can't even see it right here. There's an oil pan under there. We all know this. <laughs> we'll drop the oil pan and then see if we could unbolt the pistons so we could start turning this crank to get to the torque converter bolts. Then we'll get this thing out. I'm trying to do it as easy as possible, but... Hey, it's a Jeep. Jeep my life. I'll try a little penetrating oil up in here. I don't think it's gonna work. We gotta drop the oil pan. That's physically stuck. I think the pistons are free. It's just a mess under there. Well, oh man, I'm so sorry I missed it. Was dropping the oil pan, got a bunch of bolts out, realized, hey, I never drained the oil. So I took off the oil plug and about two gallons of coolant just spewed out all over me, pure coolant, and then I got this frothy stuff, another couple of gallons. Oh man, it is just slimy, snotty, coolant mixed oil. We got a whole vat of Jeep snot, Jeep mucus, oh, still bubbling. This is gross. All right, last oil pan bolt. <laughs> oh, I hope it's empty. I do not want to get this Jeep mucus on me. Feel so funky. I feel so funky. Hey, that's dropping right down. Okay. Okay. You all right? You all right? All right. Just as I thought, it's not going anywhere. But the steering in the way. Not sure what it's resting on back here. Let's see if I can get it completely down. And then maybe I can slide out the oil pump. I don't know. It's the pickup that's usually in the way. But, but again, we did have a catastrophic engine failure, so who knows what the heck is holding this up. 
it had to move the starter and some weird part I never saw before some kind of engine brace or whatever whatever this thing is that was in the way and I oh hey look at that <laughs> I just had to remove the oil pump and uh, pickup I reached in there and got that off of the 13 millimeter look at that slid right out hey let's see what we got Ooh. that's yucky come to me baby gross let's see what's in here oh here is the fuel pump and pickup sorry oil pump and pickup I always do that covered in the mucus Ugh. it does feel funky oh and look there's chunks in there oh my goodness hey I found piston number six ho 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 Whoa, whoa, -ho -ho. that's gross. Oh, it's still gross. Oh my God, so gross. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder why it wasn't draining. Oh man, here's, oh man, here's your piston rings. Here's a little oily guy. Look at this, look Ma. <laughs> hey, hey, I found the valve. Look at this. Holy crap. Blah. All right. Just got to include you guys. I don't want to get too far ahead of you. I took the girdle off. A bunch of 9 16 bolts. And the girdle came right down. That's what it looks like right there. That girdle thingy. And uh, I started getting at these, um, what do you call them? The cap. The connecting rod. Cap. Oop nuts I just gave it a little tap there we go got the cap off now we're up to speed I heard something shift just now I'm trying to hold the flashlight at the same time sorry I'm missing um, what is this come on can't reach it something oh oh it's stuck <laughs> there is more piston look at that yow oh my goodness maybe maybe now we could get this rod out there oh more chunks about to fall all right oh 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 look at that more chunks oh my goodness well, this is definitely why it ain't moving. Oh, there's the bearing. Oh, there's the bearing. There's a big chunk in here. Maybe I can reach down from the top. All right, let me reach down this mess. Well, it's deeper than I thought. There's a chunk of metal in there. I hear it rattling. There we go. Nope, oh, there it is. <laughs> there's another chunk. I'm gonna push the piston up from the bottom. All right, got it. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. hey it's not bad. Nice wrist pin. <laughs> well, I wouldn't reuse it, but that's cool. She's out. Let's see if she'll spin now. All right, let's see if that did the trick. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, here's some of my wood block. Freedom! Freedom! Now we can get to the torque converter bolts and we can finally pull this engine. Sweet victory. <laughs> All right, so we set out to free this engine so we could take it out. We have done that. It now rotates freely. The pistons move, fantastic. And doing so, we discovered a question. Where did piston number six go? <laughs> and of course, we ultimately found it. 
This is piston six. It is destroyed. Took out a valve, or maybe the valve took out the piston, you never know. It also took out the cylinder. So this engine is shot, and uh, we gotta remove it. We could do it now, so successful mission. Uh, this is the engine that's going in. I gotta finish building it, but we'll put that engine and this WJ once we get that out, and I'm gonna call it a day, because I'm smoked. All right, guys, thank you for watching me free up an engine and <laughs> dig out these piston chunks. Um, hope you learned something, tips, tricks, I don't know, something entertaining, something educational, uh, something inspiring and encouraging. You know, that's what we do on the project. But the uh, engine here is free. It is no longer seized. There's more than one way to unseize an engine. I was hoping I could just, you know, hammer the pistons, maybe break a little bit of rust free because, uh, you know, it had coolant in there. I was thinking maybe it was rusted. Not the case. We had the crank completely <laughs> bound up with chunks of piston. Now we know why. So the chunks were removed, piston, uh, they all spin freely. Well, the crank spins freely and the remaining pistons move up and down. We'll be able to now move the torque converter to get to those torque converter bolts. We'll separate this engine, take out, I don't know, there's two 15 millimeter bolts on top two 16 millimeter bolts on the side. Those are the two main anchor bolts that hold the engine to the bell housing. This baby will pop right off. We'll put in the new engine and then Steve, you'll be ready to go in no time. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate you watching. Remember to like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the next project. Peace. I got it.